Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the Canon R50 quick start guide style. So I'm gonna get you up and running as fast as possible on this new mirrorless camera. Now, when you wanna go deeper and you really wanna learn how to use this camera for the maximum power, that's when you're gonna to wanna to come back and check out the full beginner's guide that I'm gonna also make for the Canon R50. So stay tuned for that. This one is gonna be much quicker though. We'll get you up and running in about 10 minutes. Let's go. So I got the kit with the 55 to 210 millimeter lens and I also got the 18 to 45 millimeter lens. So this is a great combo because these two lenses complement one another. The 18 to 45 is very small and compact, but it has a limited range. The 55 to 210 is a telephoto lens. So that's gonna allow you to zoom in like way more, like for birds, uh, if you're at the zoo, your kids playing sports on a field. The 18 to 45 millimeter doesn't zoom in enough to do that type of stuff. Still get great photos with this lens, but that's why this is such a great combo because the 55 to 210 kind of takes over where the 18 to 45 you know stops so anyways th these are the two lenses i got right here as you can see i'm just going to put them to the side now here is the battery charger you just got to throw the battery in like so and then plug this into the wall so this is what it looks like when it's charging the full light will go green when the battery is completely charged all right so here's the neck strap and i'm not going to put it on right now but it has these two little holes here that you can weave the neck strap through so i do recommend putting this on unless you have you know a wrist strap or something else you plan on using it's nice having that extra security you know what i mean so you can just hang the camera around your neck for a minute if you need to do something with your hands all right so here's what we're looking at let's throw the battery in there so if we turn this upside down, you have this door and you also have the tripod mount plate. So if we open the door here, that's what it looks like inside. Now, the battery goes in like this. From this perspective, it goes in like so and clicks into place. Now, this uh, gray little lever here is a slide lever that locks when the battery goes in. So you can see when you pull this back, that will release the battery so you can take it out. This is a UHS-1 card slot, so you don't have to spend that much money on a memory card. Now, I would still recommend getting a good card, but uh, like I said, because it's a UHS-1 slot, you don't necessarily need a UHS-2 card. However, a UHS-2 card will allow you to transfer photos and videos faster if you were to plug the card into a high-speed reader, for example. So you can still benefit from a faster card, even though the camera you know, can't really take advantage of it. All right, so the memory card goes in like this, and you just push it in, and it clicks into place. And now we have the memory card and battery in there. So now when we close the door, notice how this does not auto lock like the R10. You have to actually slide that over. All right, now we got the battery in there. Let's move on to mounting the lens. So I'm gonna go with the 18 to 45 millimeter lens first. So let's mount that up to the camera. So what we have here is a body cap. So this is the RF body cap. So you just gotta turn this counterclockwise and then it'll come off and you notice there is the sensor so you always want to have either the body cap on or a lens you do not want to leave the camera like this with the sensor exposed ever so when you're changing lenses that's really the only time that you do that notice there is a red dash on the lens mount right there you're going to need to line the lens up to that dash and you'll see that the lens has a corresponding red dash so we just line up those red dashes like so and then turn the lens clockwise and you'll hear a click. That click is the lens mount pin and you can release the lens by hitting this button here. So if I press this button and turn the lens, it will release. And if you notice here, there's a lock pin. You can see that lock pin moving, that's the lock. So that is how you would go about putting lenses on and taking them off. So the 55 to 210 works exactly the same way. Now, another thing worth noting is when you go to use the lens, you do have to open it up. So the lens right now is in a collapsed, like pancake style position, which makes it easier to stow. But when you wanna use the lens, you have to actually open it. So now the lens is open. And if you take the lens cap off, you could see the front lens elements there. Now we're looking at 18 millimeters. So you have to physically zoom this lens, guys. It's not like a power zoom that you might be used to coming from, you know, point and shoot style cameras or cell phones or something. So you have to actually zoom this lens. So 18 millimeter is gonna be like the wider angle view. So you'll be able to see more in the scene. When you zoom to 45, it's gonna be like a tighter crop, better for like portraits and things like that. 
So that's pretty much how the lens works. Now this is a focus ring that you can use for manual focus and depending on the camera, you can also use this as a control for other features on the camera. All right guys, so a couple of things I just wanna show you on the top of the camera. You have here is a shutter button. So you press this button to focus and then if you press it all the way, it will take the photo. Now this red button here is to record video. So you press that to start recording. This here is the mode dial. I highly recommend leaving that in auto for now while you get used to the camera, assuming that you're a beginner and you don't know what any of this stuff means. If that's, if that's you, then put the camera in auto mode for now. Just we'll get out there and take some photos and stuff. And when you guys are ready for more power, that's when you can come back, watch the beginner's guide and start using some of these more advanced modes. You also have a control wheel here. And then on the back, we have a couple other buttons up here info you have a directional pad and you also have a center button here for like enter and set that's what that stands for also the q menu you have a playback button and a menu button and then of course you have the evf now you're going to put your eye up to that to look through the evf or you can swivel out the screen swivel it like this and then close it and now you have an lcd screen to look at which is really nice and you can also swivel the screen like this for selfie mode if you want to take video or photos of yourself so here is the on and off toggle. So let's turn this beast on. All right, so when you first turn this on, you are presented with this menu here. So I'm gonna select English and it wants you to set the date and time. So let me do that. So I'm just gonna click set here and the month is gonna be March 26th. You can just touch around here like so. You can also go and select your time zone here, but I'm just gonna set it to the correct date and time. That seems to work good. Click okay. Now it's also prompting you to connect to the Canon Connect app, which will allow you to remote control the camera and also take photos and videos off the camera to your smart device. Now guys, I have a dedicated video on the Canon Connect app. So just be sure to check that video out if you wanna do that. I'm gonna click cancel and here you have it. So this is what the camera looks like when you first turn it on and it's gonna give you these little memos that pop up when you're new to the camera. All right, so these little menus will pop up and just let you know what these things do. So it's just telling you that this effects option here is there if you wanna use that. So you can click okay. And there's this also this option here, which is the creative assist. So this, again, it'll tells you what it does. Automatically configure the optimal settings for a scene. You can apply prefer preferred effects before shooting. Now, creative bracketing. This will take multiple photos. So think auto HDR, for example, things like that. Now, compositing and other advanced processing based on scene detection by camera. This is just another advanced mode that you guys wanna, might wanna play with as you're getting used to this camera. So I'm just gonna click OK. And now, like I said, I'm in auto plus mode. All right, so you see how I'm pressing the button and it's focusing? And now if I hold the button down, it's gonna take a photo. And that's how you would go about taking a photo. Now remember how I told you, you gotta zoom the lens? So if you turn the lens here, watch how it's zooming in and out. So that's how that works. That's 45 millimeter, that's 18 millimeter. So be sure to use the zoom and get the most out of that lens there. So now also, if you wanna record video, you can just hit record and it'll start recording. That simple. All right, guys, one other thing I wanted to show you here is how you can just touch around the screen to enable touch focus. So you can see here the touch focus. So when you do that, it's analyzing the scene and it creates like what size it needs and thinks you're tracking. So just so you are aware, you can just touch around the screen to focus, which is very helpful. Now to turn that off, the touch focus, you can see this little box up here that says off. So you can turn that off like so. Also note this little icon down here and it's showing you a picture of a little car and it says off and it's got like a little hand there. If you select that, touch shutter is now enabled. So now if you touch, it's just gonna take a photo. Very, very cool, very powerful feature. And I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. I'm just gonna turn the focus off. All right guys, so because we're in full auto mode, we're limited with the amount of power we have, but check out this cool feature here on the bottom right if you select that little paintbrush, now it's giving you options to do all sorts of stuff. And this will really help you out from a beginner perspective. So if you want the background to be blurry, you can just click that button here and now drag the slider where you want it or just allow it to do it in auto. So this is very powerful and super easy to use from the beginner perspective. Just click OK. If we go back in here, you also have brightness. So you can control the brightness up and down, contrast up and down, 
and you also have color so you can go neutral and so forth and that's pretty much it so that's okay so again even though we're in full auto mode this little button down here will give you the opportunity for more power and then of course this feature here gives you different three different creative assist modes so you can go ahead and play with those as well so that is just the basics of how this camera works and that'll get you up and running now if you hit the menu button here all right one thing i wanted to show you guys here is the movie record setting by default it is set to hd 30p so um, i just wanted to make you aware that there's the 4k option here if you want to try the 4k option now image quality for photos right here, it's set to JPEG large. If you guys wanna shoot RAW or RAW plus JPEG, this is where the options for that are. If you wanna shoot RAW plus JPEG, you could select it like that. If you wanna shoot just RAW, you can hit the minus there. But if you have them both selected, now it's gonna shoot RAW plus JPEG. I'm just gonna leave it on JPEG like that though. Now if you put your eye up to the viewfinder, it will switch to the viewfinder. You could see that little TV, it looks like it comes on. So this is great for bright lighting conditions. And if you need to adjust for your eye, underneath here there's like that slider to adjust for your vision if you wear glasses. And then if you guys wanna review your photos, if you hit this play button here, that will bring you into the playback area where you can review your photos and videos. So you could just tap the screen to hit play and it'll start playing as you can see. If we go to the right, you can see how there's the photo that we took as well. You can also pinch to zoom out to see more stuff and like so. So if I double tap that, I can actually pinch in to get more detail and that is the basics of how that works. So, all right guys, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and please subscribe because I'm gonna come out with a full-fledged beginner's guide for the Canon R50 really soon and you're gonna wanna see that when it comes out. But in the meantime, be sure to get out there, start taking some photos and videos and uh, enjoy your new camera. It's exciting, it's a great camera, very powerful. You're gonna get killer photos and video with it. So enjoy yourself and uh, like I said, we'll catch up with you next time. All right guys, take care.